to Nevada and the famous Lovelock caves, uh, mum, mum, mummies and skeletons that have been discovered. Um, they were said to be a legendary tribe of red-haired cannibalistic giants. That is going to scare you if you meet a bunch of them, isn't it? Um, but it just you can see the size of them. You can see the jaw size on the top right there compared to a normal jaw. And on the bottom right, uh, this is one of their, their sandals that they even wore. That was, uh, that was um, managed to survive many thousands of years. The whole story goes that they were actually the um, Piute uh, oral history, who were the Native American tribe of that area, were terrorized by these, these red-haired cannibalistic giants. And even they would be eaten by them. If there wasn't enough food to go around, the giants would just turn up at the places these, these uh, Native Americans were staying and just go and grab them and eat them. It's pretty scary, you know, that size jaw coming after you, it, it would be pretty scary. And so what they did is that the, the Pewty all got together and they, when, when all of the giants, they, they, they chased all the giants into Lovelock Caves. This is going back, you know, over 150, no, several hundred years, because the, as the legend states, they actually got them, hid them in it and then made a massive fire at the entrance of the cave and killed them all, smoked them all out and took out this whole race of giants who lived in the Nevada area. Some of them, uh, that didn't get burnt were actually mummified, they actually very, very sophisticated mummified remains and they all had red and blonde hair again and this pale skin, uh, suggesting a much earlier prehistoric race of unknown origin uh, existed in that area. This actually shows you a rare photo on the left there of one of the skulls that have now been removed from display. In most other museums you get that. It's partly to do with the NAGPRA Act, the Native American Graves uh, Repatriation uh, act. I think that's the right order of words, I'm not sure. On the bottom right there you can see the powerful jaws that would have munched on humans. Uh, and here, in, in, in just not too far from there in Utah, uh, more red-haired uh, and wavy-haired, a white race in America, thousands of years old. These were, the, you know, um, years before the Indians or the cliff dwellers, it states. This one out on the left here is actually from um, San Diego. It was actually discovered in San Diego. Uh, it's, uh, I think, 10 feet high. Uh, again, it, it was, had red hair and it was mummified. And on the right-hand side, it's very similar, very the same size, same style of mummification, red hair, fair skin mummy from China, which is 3,000, I believe 3,600 around that area BC. So we're looking, we're finding correspondences all over the world. In 1912, Ranchers started coming to this isolated cave near Lovelock, Nevada to dig out bat guano for fertilizer. Inside, a surprise was waiting for them. They began excavating the 10 to 15 feet of guano that was here in this cave. They started discovering some unusual artifacts. They found duck decoys and baskets other things for hunting and fishing in the nearby lake that's now drying up. But then they made some very unusual discoveries, and those were of red-haired giants that were mummified. These giants were six and a half to seven feet tall. In many cases, they were mummified, wrapped up like Egyptian mummies, and they had long red hair going down to their shoulders. The ranchers couldn't explain it. It was the strangest thing they'd ever seen. But the Paiute Indians who lived around here knew all about it. In fact, back in 1883, Sarah Winnemucca, a Paiute Indian princess, had written a book called Life Among the Paiutes. In that book, she talked all about the giant red-haired people who used to live around this lake and live in this cave. She claimed they were cannibals. That tribe would eat the dead. They would make war on my people. My people went to work and gathered wood to fill up the mouth of the cave. At last, my people set it on fire and called out to them, Give up or you will die. But no answer came. Now, one of the great mysteries of the West is what happened to these giants? There was nearly 60 skeletons brought out of this cave, but today they're nowhere to be found. Is it that there is some kind of archaeological cover-up that has occurred here? Something that concerns giants? 